It's a Daily Talk Show, episode 463. And we've got intern Pete in the building. Actually, no, we're <laughs> completely out of the building, the Ovalo Hotel, where we've been staying. We're at the, we're we're at the park. We're in the most open park in Sydney and we're all squashed together. That's great. <laughs> I feel like I've been seeing you and your uh, fitness training. I think it's all been for this, to get your hips loose enough to be able to sit down on the ground like we are. Yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> keep an eye on my posture. That's all the physio ever says, is keep a straight posture. So if I start <laughs> slouching down, just let me know. Well, we've got Mr. 97 here. He can just yell out, straighten. There we go. Uh, by the way, a little bit starstruck to meet this guy. This guy's become quite the internet sensation, hasn't he? You guys really made him. Well, I mean, he's been our intern. It's become a full-time job. I mean, he, he just doesn't work with the kind of talent that you do, Right, Pete. OK. Do you pay him? <laughs> yeah. OK, good yeah, on you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's nice to get some money sometimes. Anyway. Uh, when, it, when it comes to living in Sydney, I've heard that pe- some people will really stay in their box, in their one area, in their one suburb. Uh, do you spend much time around here? No, so we're in, where are we, Woolloomooloo. So this is the place you go to for a corporate lunch. Mm-hmm. This is a place where you go to, um, you know, play up a little bit, I suppose, on a, on a weekend. But it's also a pretty expensive part as well. So I'm in Inner Wester, mm-hmm. and, or Inner West, I should say, which is like the um, the poor version of Newtown, um, if, if you can even have that. But um, it's kind of the area that um, I like. I like the Inner West. There's lots of breweries and lots of, um, it's not too weird, because here you've got weirdos walking around everywhere. <laughs> yeah. uh, and three metre pizzas at Crenita. Yeah, um, totally. Is that close to the Kiss FM office? In no, we're in North Ride, so okay. we're over the way over the other side of Sydney. So in what I call the Metropolis uh, North Ride, where um, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere, but we're right. Industrial is probably the wrong word, but like the big Optus buildings over there, and it's just become a mecca of buildings the last couple of weeks. So and there's a Westfield. Yeah, there is. No, it's a Macquarie Centre, best oh, Macquarie? shopping centre in Sydney, though. By the way, it's it's not bad. I've been. What, uh, what in, have they got? Oh, just got shops. <laughs> <laughs> and just call it the best. Yeah. But no, I actually went. Uh, parking's a bit of a nightmare around the Kiss office. Yeah, it is. Uh, do you at least get a car park? I get a car park. No, I have to pay for a car park. You so do. there's some yeah. levels of management, and I'm not management by any means. So an intern is always never going to is always going to have to pay for their car park. But um, that comes out of my monthly pay, and you know I never notice it. So and it's not a great park car park I've still got to walk a kilometre to get into the office so we've had Jace Hawkins on the show uh, he got his nickname from Kyle Sandalance yeah Labby uh, Labby yeah no, yeah, yeah Labrat. Yeah, 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 Labrat, Labby. But I think he's trying to get rid of that name. Oh, he's dropped it. <laughs> um, how did you get intern Pete? Um, well, so I started at Kiss just before the uh, the end of Mix 1065, um, and I was doing a bit of contracting, and that was weird. I got this job, lied through my teeth, um, and it was called, uh, they called it a social media manager. Yeah. So I became a social media, when, you know, just when Facebook and um, Twitter was sort of really getting going, and I remember going, yeah, I can do that, I got that, I got that, and um, lied through my teeth. Um, I got caught out of about a couple of weeks into it because there was just spelling mistakes on the Facebook page <laughs> and it was just became a bit of a mess. So, um, And then the Kyle and Jackie O were coming over and obviously I'd worked at Today FM beforehand on the Hot 30, uh, Triple M before that. So I sort of had a connection there a little bit, a bit loosely. So I just made sure I hung around for the right times before I got fired. Yeah. And then um, the intern Pete character was born, was actually born on when the Modern Family cast came to Australia. Do you remember when they filmed the, um, the TV show? Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. the TV episode there. Yeah, they came, and Eric Stone Street came on the Sunday morning, and I don't know where all the producers were, but I was like, well, let's go and get him at the airport. And um, so I got him on the show, or got him on the on the uh, voice memos, and then played that on the show, and then Kyle said, well, go and get another one, you know, because there was each day there was different cast members flying in, in in groups of two, I think it was. The next day it was Jesse Tyler, and um, he flew in, and I was live on the air with Kyle and Jack, and it was just a scramble, because word had got out, they were flying in on the 8 o'clock flight from Qantas, you know, they had the deal there, all that sort of stuff. Um, we got him. It was amazing. We pushed everyone out of the way. Um, and it was, it was a really good feeling, right? Yeah. And then Kyle sort of, I think he started, I don't know if he mucked up the word contractor with intern, but then he started calling me, this intern wants to get a job. So every day I want a Modern Family cast member on the show. So I went back the next day and I think it was Sophia Vergara and who's the guy, the old guy, Jay, Jay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 we yeah, know we know, yeah. Oh, you know the character. You know the character. Yeah. Um, Sorry anyway, about, oh, geez, we're oh, getting Tax. Uh, yeah, so uh, what happened there was I was deflated because everyone caught on that if you go to the airport, all the other radio stations and yeah. all the other media, if you, go to, if you go to the airport, you'll get them. You'll <laughs> actually get them. So I came back really deflated and I said to Jackie on the roof, I was like, oh, do you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm gutted because also I was causing a bit of ruckus as well at the airport. Like I was a bit loud, a bit yelly, security weren't happy, police weren't happy, all that sort of stuff. You tend to be the place not to do yeah. any of those yeah. things. I know, I know. And is that, a, is that a character trait that has... Uh, has been with you always or is that it? I'm pretty hungry 
to get if I want to go and get something I'll, I'll do what it takes uh-huh. and I feel like I'm protected hopefully by the lawyers at work if it all goes bad because <laughs> yeah. this is where it went really bad is I said to Jackie I said there's there's no way I'm going to get these next ones that fly in the next day what I'm going to have to do is what what if I flew to LA and, and got on the same flight as them and maybe oh. get on the plane anyway that flight had already taken off but I was like what if I fly to New Zealand and back so I flew to New Zealand, had an hour nanny nap in the um, in the hotel, then got back on the plane to land at the exact same time as the final Modern Family cast. Yeah. And of course, I've called into the show live, and there was um, Phil, 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 the dad, yeah, Phil Dumphy. Dumphy. yeah, Phil Dumphy, and the wife Julie. And um, next minute, I'm in I'm in the baggage carrier. There they are. I'm live on the air, and bang! Here comes the police. They've literally swarmed me. They thought I had jumped through border security oh. and not caught a flight. And they were going, where have you been? I said, New Zealand. Was, they said, what for? And I yeah. said, a meeting. I was yeah. like, what meeting? I yeah. said, just a really quick one. And this is all live on the air. I've hung up on Kyle and Jack. Um, and they're, they're, they're thinking I've been arrested. It's all over. It's all over. And they're like, it, basically, it was just pandemonium. Because also, you're not allowed to use a phone at the... Um, at the baggage carrier as well. And, is that um, right? Yeah, well, yep, I, learned, I learned my lesson that day, so I couldn't call back. So they're left in limbo thinking, I've been arrested, it's yeah. all over, it's all over. Finally, I got my phone back, convinced them that, yes, I'm a legitimate customer who's you know flown back into the country. And then, um, and then we got back on the phone and it was like, oh my God, what happened? So I explained. And at this stage, Robbie Williams had flown in on the same flight. And they were like, we'll go and get him. And then other journalists were calling in. It was just, it was just pandemonium. <laughs> And then I was pretending to limp to walk slower because they were like, get out of the airport now. Uh, And it was just mayhem. And then I just remember being... Oh, okay. So I flew all the way back there and got absolutely nothing. Did you love it though? I loved it. We made Rose Leslie from Game of Thrones wait in the green room. She was Uh ready for her spot on the air and Kyle's going, no, 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 no. We've got to, you will get an outcome. I know he's got an outcome. I didn't have an outcome and we made Rose Leslie wait for now. (laughs) Have you always been someone who wants to uh, impress people? Like, I guess this is a good example of, I remember being a kid and uh, always people saying they would show off and wanting to impress people. Is, was, is, was there a little bit of wanting? Wanting to impress the show? With yeah, what I you think get. so because Kyle Jack's also the show that you know I, I did radio for probably uh, like eight or nine years beforehand. It was always a show I wanted to work on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was mm. definitely there. And you do want to impress though. Do you know what I mean? You don't. I always think like if they're investing in you to even put you on a plane to go anywhere or give you a cab charge, you've got to justify the trip. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like we know radios, we've got some pretty good budgets and all yeah. those sort of things. But if they're investing in you to go somewhere and do something, you have to deliver. Uh-huh. There's no question about it. So I put a lot of pressure on my Myself to do that as mm. well and so what was what was the drive to want to work for Kyle and Jackie O because from Melbourne or if you live in Melbourne I don't think you get it like when you do when you live in Sydney because when I lived up here I was like wow yeah there's a real buzz mm. even in the morning driving like it I got it when I moved here yeah absolutely I reckon it's just the show it's probably the most raw and honest show there where they're gonna tell it how it is and they're almost gonna reflect you know whether it's their moods what's going on in the whatever happens on the traffic at 5 a.m. in the morning that's what's going to be reflected on the show and I just think there's no other raw show out there Mm. it is so raw Kyle will be honest if he doesn't like a song he will tell it on the air to the listeners and I feel like they're (laughs) along for the ride as well which is why I just love the honesty about it because there is no secrets on our show do you know what I mean like we're all literally I think if you are caught or if you are lying or trying to protect something it generally gets caught out eventually yeah. and that mightn't be a bad thing it just mm. means you didn't want to bring that up on the air at the time and it'll it'll come out it, it actually will. makes it a great workplace because you know everyone you know where they're at you know what what, what, what mood you're in. Yeah, yeah. totally. And, so, and we've got a great production team as well where we you know if someone's having an off day it's okay to say I'm, I'm off today, can you have my back? Or whatever it happens to be. And, and yeah. we all do have each other's back in every single way. We protect each other, you know, because at the end of the day, what's coming out of the speakers is the most important thing, but the staff are just as important to look after as well. Did you always want to be on air? Like, was, was that part of the plan? So I did on air in regional Victoria for a few years. Um, I had a brekkie show called The Whole Hog with Depla. Um, not, not a huge success, but... Um, what did you talk about? Yeah, what was uh, it? Was it was half the hog. Oh, oh, we 
did the five hundred dollar minute. We did. I uh, had my mum on here a lot. Mum's a bit of a character. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just just the general hoo ha. It wasn't. It wasn't a great show. But what I really year was it? Oh God. So that would be t- over ten years ago now. Eleven, maybe twelve years ago. <laughs> yeah. So I did the rounds of regional Victoria for a while. Moved to South Australia. Um, worked at Magic FM in the Riverland. Um, you know, lied my way to get a job there. That was awesome. But some of the best years of my life was regional radio. Though. Yeah. Like I absolutely loved it. And you and you know what? You hear the stories all the time. Um, you know, it's the best grounding and all that sort of stuff. But it actually really is. You know, yeah. you, you learn to do everything. Mm. They never like, let me copyright though because I could not spell. <laughs> I literally can't spell. Well, can I, mate? Uh, maybe that's why they let me into regional radio too. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like there's a lot of people in uh, regional radio that end up being like copywriters and stuff like that because they have to write their own ads. Yeah, you got to do everything. Yeah. yeah, literally everything. I think I was producing, doing the Brecky show. That's it, actually. <laughs> Jeez, it's a fair pressure in itself when you... I, I don't, you've got capacity when you're younger and you've only, you know when you're new to something mm. you can only sort of take on so much and so doing the breakfast show as it's as it as it is is a fair cognitive load on you after a full day like i remember getting off air and i'd be so spent and it was the intensity going into it that i probably just made for myself but are you still now you know 10 years later coming off air with the team going whoa we're spent this was we gave it all yeah totally they're the best shows and I think and you I I do aim for that feeling every show though because you want to walk out like um, I call it a Saturday night service in hospitality you're organised you've got (laughs) everything ready there's nothing you can do better like you've got it ready but it's just going to go haywire and that's the feeling you want every single show like we've had some whopper of shows um, you know from from the launch to you get a car day to to literally I think you know the other day we did the um, uh, every caller who made it to where got a holiday somewhere around the world and those Mm. days are just so spectacular but we have to make sure the days that aren't those big big moments are just Mm. Special and that can be anything from a guest or a moment or a, or whatever it happens to be, you know. Uh, I feel like your character on air, there's a level of punter mentality which you bring, which I love. <laughs> but with the role that you have beyond the going up to the red carpet and going up to people, you need to have self awareness. You need to understand when to approach people, mm. when when not to. Uh, how do you distinguish between those those moments? Yeah, you're right. There's actually so many working parts to that because there is, should I approach now? <laughs> do I approach like that and then get kicked off the carpet and get no more content for the night? Or do I risk that relationship with a smile on my face? And go, oh, yeah. Just <laughs> kidding, just kidding, but say it anyway. Um, yeah, there's so many. I love, that, I love a red carpet because... Everyone's taking it seriously who's working on that red carpet. Yeah. This is their thing. They've been building up for this for the entire year, whether it's the Logies, Oscars, or whatever it happens to be. They just, this is their time. So you do want to respect that. I'll always respect um, what the carpet is. But, you know, at the same time, um, I, as I said before, I need to deliver. I need to mm. deliver some content. And the good thing, I suppose, about... Um, intern Pete is um, a failure sometimes can be a win because yeah, yeah. Um, you know it's you you have to deliver something and I think they're um, I just when you try to go back to your point about like you know knowing when to go um, yeah. I've got it wrong so many times oh so, really so many times I brought a couple of midgets sorry small statured people to um, the Logies a couple of years ago uh-huh. and just got absolutely hammered for it like people were disgusted yeah. in it whereas others got it they got it uh-huh. do you know what I mean and then when I spoke to them I said are you, are you guys offended they're like no you're giving us employment for the night thank you very much do you yeah. know what I mean a couple of guys from Melbourne awesome awesome dwarfs dwarfsforhire.com.au if you haven't eaten they're yeah, actually yeah. really awesome guys and the uh, what, what are the people who are in your position but at other radio stations or you know they're doing a different shtick which is the showing up it's probably the Tommy Jacket approach in some ways where it's uh, when he was doing the red carpet thing you sort of you're, you're behind the line you do your bit do you find that people are envious of your ability just to fuck shit up? People hate my guts. They hate me. I have been abused by so many people. It's literally like, I, I don't ever want to, like, you know, if you're to the right from one radio station and another, yeah. like, there's a respect, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, you, you can feel that guest who's running late, publicists are pushing them along, yeah. they're, cull- they're starting to cull. So they're starting to cull. You cannot be on that cull list. Yeah. You absolutely need to fight tooth and nail for it and uh, make sure you got it. And if that means right at that last moment stepping over, and I had to do this in New York a couple of weeks ago with 50 Cent, 
literally that. I was like, well, I've got to go to the carpet now and we've got to get him. Yeah. And there's no question about it. And, and, and I did that. Um, we got four seconds of audio, which Colin Jack will really stoked to um, fly me all that way to get four seconds. <laughs> well, what did he say? Did. What did he say? Well, I gave him a necklace with a 50 cent coin on it. So yeah. I thought that would be funny. That would be lighthearted. And then ask him about his TV show power. And people moved you on very quickly in very that Very quickly. And yeah. so are those... Do the the people working for those high-profile high people, do they understand the shtick in which you're playing in? Probably not in America, but, yeah. um, but that's okay. I think when the American red carpets are the funnest because there's always a lot of confusion of who's yeah. supposed to be on the carpet and yeah. who's not. Yeah. Um, I've done a few little tricks up my sleeve because I've done a few carpets and I keep lanyards with me and I've got a few fake lanyards as well because <laughs> when you start to work out oh, that's what the uh, VIP one looks like. I've got a similar yeah. colour there and, you know, <laughs> maybe I'll do a bit of a swap here and see where it lands. But you know what? When your time's done on the carpet, when you're asked to leave, just leave. It's yeah. over. Mm -hmm. It's done. Mm -hmm. Maybe one more little go on the way out, but, yeah, you've got to have a go. Uh, when we were uh, coming to Sydney, uh, I am a Gold uh, Velocity member oh. with Virgin Australia. Not, not to brag. I mean, I mentioned it four times already in <laughs> Sydney. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This story is making the, the rounds. Fifth, the fifth. Uh, <laughs> But basically, uh, you only get one uh, ec uh, plus one. Oh, of course. Uh, you got in the lounge. Nah, nah, We've we got, got Mr. 97. Which is third wheel. And so... They should have the third wheel policy. We were determined to get Mr. 97 in, and they were not budging. <laughs> and I was trying everything. I was like, we're wearing the same clothes. I love it. Yeah. Uh, he did a great job, by the way. He uh, went hard. Josh did. Yeah. And then when well, we ended up... Le like, they said, oh, look, you can pay 65 bucks for him to go in, and you can all go mm. in. And uh, out of principle, I said, oh, look, uh, then none of us will go. And so we walked off and had a shit coffee somewhere. Uh, but do you find that that mentality that you bring to uh, your work of just being unashamed Shame yeah, your I don't, there's no point being embarrassed or yeah. ashamed of anything you do, to be honest. But do I mean, you do that in day to day, like yeah, I do. in I think restaurants? I, do. I think I do. I oh, like there's no there's no need to be a fool if you don't you don't you don't need to be. And I'm not saying I act like a fool all the time, but um, there's. I think we're all taking life too serious. Uh -huh. I genuinely believe that in, in everything we do. Everyone's become a food expert because they've got an Instagram <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. Do you know what I mean? I, I just think have a bit of fun with it because guess what? We're all doing the same thing. We're all making money. We're all just, just trying to have a go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I definitely do bring the fun. Um, well, I try to bring the fun in, in life as much as I can mm. and then um, you know have the quiet time at home. You know? Is it uh, like Alex Honnold, the rock climber who doesn't have the part of his brain that experiences the fear? Have you literally lost the bit where it's like, I'd I no, don't no, have no, the embarrassment? No, no. Oh, you, you feel no, no, it. No, I definitely have the fear. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, fear okay. is always there. Anxiousness is always there. But I think I thrive off that yeah, as well. Yeah. I think that's my where in that split moment, if it is the biggest interview in the world or whatever it happens to be, that's mm -hmm. when that anxiety and fear just explodes. Uh -huh. That's, yeah, it's, it's a really weird feeling. Uh, so I'm not a very much a cross sport, but I do remember a time where you were completely rocked by something you'd done. It was involved a cricket player and you got up and said something and then you uh, you weren't feeling great from the public response. That was a weird one, yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was a weird one. That was, are you talking about Steve Smith? Yeah yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, that was the press conference. That was Easter last year, uh -huh. I think it was. It was a Thursday night, I think it was, about 7.07 p.m. Uh -huh. No, not that I, uh, yeah, no, that was a... <laughs> no, but it did rattle you, right? Mate, it like, did, all you know what like, it did? And, yeah. and I, think, I think a lot of people, uh, what, what rattled me the most is I think... I think the immediacy after a press conference like that, um, when I, what has been called a bombshell had gone off, mm -hmm. um, you know, Steve was very upset about it, and uh, or, you know, flying in from, from what had happened with the cricket and stuff. And I definitely, um, I just remember leaving the airport with just the camera crews following me and going, "Oh shit, okay, I think this is something. Mm -hmm. I think there is something here that's uh, crossed the line." Because I do, as I was saying, when I do a press conference or a red carpet, it's kind of um, you know, I am thinking about things, but I'm also, uh, you know, read that room wrong. Mm, yeah. Really read that wrong. But um, what was the biggest thing that I was just blown away was not the social media backlash. Mm -hmm. It was the the DMs, the inboxes, the 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 death threats. It was just I was blown away mm -hmm. more from like parents, <laughs> but, you know, because you because the best advice I got was, guess what, tonight, delete Twitter and Instagram off your phone. Just yeah. get it off, get it off. I was like, yep, yeah, you're right. You're uh -huh. absolutely right. 
I didn't, of course I didn't. <laughs> Sat up all night, read every single one of them, read every single message. It was the worst thing I ever did. But then you start clicking on the pictures and then you go, oh my God, you're a mum with your yeah. three kids and you've just told me to go and hang myself. Like, it, it's just ludicrous what's yeah. going on out there at the moment. And um, for me, that was quite a frightening moment. Then they found my mum on social media and my mum's a dairy farmer from Victoria. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? And then yeah. that, that starts getting affected. I mean, so I wouldn't fuck with a dairy farmer <laughs> from absolutely Victoria. Absolutely not. If you met my mum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But yeah, that's, that, that, that was a, you know, a, maybe you can call it a fair but frightening moment of... Um, people are pretty crazy when it comes to to social media and we all know the stories of keyboard warriors and stuff like that mm. but well because in that sense that advice turn turn it off means it's not there it is happening there so the energy is almost being put out there yeah are you are you so you go into work how are you feeling what well, that was a weird one because that was a Thursday night. It was a long weekend. We weren't back on air until the Tuesday. Yeah. So it was a long time to wait. Long weekend. Um, long weekend still yeah. short. But it was you know, like... and, and everyone around me was absolutely awesome. And I think um, I couldn't... I, I understood why, but I but a lot of my friends were over, you know, over cautious about me and stuff like that. Uh-huh. But whereas I've, I get hate on, literally, you read the comments on any of my posts, I just get hate from listeners in fun way. And it's always fun and jokey, so I never and take that. And feel different this, this time? This one's definitely different. But it was when I went down, I walked out of the house to get a cup of coffee and literally, I think there was two ladies just went, you crossed the line, you crossed the line. I'm going, I, how do you even know who I am? And then, of course, it was just this trying to walk back to my car and then it was more people and more people and more people and just turned into a bit of a gang pack around my car. It was what? Things, they, people was, I didn't realise how passionate people were about cr- uh, cricket in this country and <laughs> and to be honest, I still had to wait till Tuesday till we were back live on the air. I wasn't allowed into the studio until 8am so I had to wait then and then mm. Kyle and Jack, look, Kyle couldn't help himself. He opened the show and literally absolutely gave it to everyone who, who trolled me. Yeah. Um, you know, he really gave it to him, uh, gave it to them there and I, I am forever grateful to be honest both Kyle and Jack to be honest for their support. Is that something Kyle very loyal to his team? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It was because it was, um, yep, okay, uh, didn't nail the, and I, I don't say that casually, but I, I mean, you know, didn't nail the, nail the moment, all that sort of stuff, but it was just, okay, that happened, but now all this is happening. And guess what? If I was, you know, you know, weaker or whatever, or mm. not, and that's the wrong yeah. word, but you know what I mean? Like, mm. well, like you're to the wrong person. Uh, like, yeah, the impact that it would have on people's life. There's a great book by John Ronson called So You've Been Publicly Shamed. Yeah. And it talks all about someone might have done something wrong, but the backlash well and truly goes overboard yeah, in regard. Yeah. It's the know? outrage machine. Yeah. Mm. It just goes and goes and goes. And then we're in this world now where memories come up and yeah. then you know, there's, there's the reminders over and over and then the same people want to come back and just have another little go. And that's uh-huh. fine. Like, I, look, to be honest, sure, if anyone wants to have a conversation, let's go. You know, let's let's have it. If you need to have the conversation, we did say everything on the show, but mm. sure, let's, let's have it. And we're here now, aren't we? Mm. Yeah. Mm. First <laughs> interview since. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. I mean, those, I mean it's interesting because when you're, when you're doing stuff, when you're making content, when you're talking for a living, you're bound to have moments of saying shit that you regret or doing something. Yep. Have you got a, a way in which you reconcile that? If something doesn't go well, do you address it? Do you address it even internally with the team mm. and say, hey... I didn't like how this ended up going. Yeah, sometimes it might happen um, with a, a misinterpret. I reckon like an international star might misinterpret me completely because I'm very mm. yelly on a red carpet as well. Like in, in voice, I feel like I need to yell sometimes just yeah. to you know, let them know that I'm here and yeah. you know, we committed our time as well as you yeah, and you're yeah. getting paid lots of money and I'm not. Um, <laughs> But, and that, and that happened to me with, um, I won't name who it was, but it happened on the carpet and, and straight away, I knew that the publicist wasn't happy for me yelling at this star. And it was literally just a, hey, over yeah. here, it's intern Pete. Um, and I knew that publicist, so I texted our EP straight away and I was like, oh, I think I, uh, I can feel, I could feel the look. I could feel uh-huh. the look. She goes, already got the text message. Apparently yeah. you're a disgrace. You know, you've crossed the line. I went, wow. Okay. Okay. So that's what you deal with. So, so I know that when I do get a bit yelly and stuff like that, publicists, um, you know, uh, get funny with me, but it's, I, I understand they're there to protect their talent as mm. well, but I'm definitely, I'm not here in a bad yeah. natured way. I'm not here to hurt anyone or anything mm. like that. It's just here to get some content. You know? what, what do you think? So the celebrities that you hear about that give 
donuts that are rude. We've heard a few stories this week. Ben Fordham, I think, is the complete opposite. He looks for moments to... He looks for things to make the person he's speaking to shine yeah. when mm. he's the one that's the, the talent or, yeah. the, you know, the guest. But then you hear these people that um, Jeremy Renner will told a story about that just gave nothing. Yes, just, you know, little answers. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. And so what do you think is driving those celebrities that don't give anything that just are they're in a complete position of privilege totally totally um Hugh Jackman nailed it I reckon he yeah. nailed it he once said in an interview um you do your movies for free and you get paid to do your PR yeah oh, I love, love that and I was like you're absolutely right because yeah. we all know like a um, like a t- uh, what do you call it a, a junket for a movie right there's a hotel room there's 40 to 50 journalists over two days Bang, bang, bang. Eight minutes, eight minutes, eight minutes, eight minutes. Hugh Jackman's like, no, well, these guys have given up all their time. I consider getting paid for these two days. The movies, they're just for free. And I just thought that is such a great outlook on life. You know, those things you give the the people the time that are giving you the time Mm. to talk about your movie. Mate, I would do two days of a press, but the movie would be absolutely horrible. (laughs) But I'd still take the money for the press days. Uh, (laughs) Who surprised you uh, as just being a really quality uh, guest on the red carpet? Uh, Only the... uh, Oh, on the red carpet. I wanted to mention one that was on the show the other day. It was Gary Gary, Gary Gary V. V. Oh, my God, Father. Now, there's... I mean, look... I'm sure there's a lot of your audience that follow him as well, but just the way he conducted himself uh-huh. was more than I imagined in the studio. Like, obviously, you know, we've got such a large team. He went around, he introduced himself to everyone, and he's also a guy that remembered everyone's name on the uh-huh. way out of the interview as well. And get, he wasn't he wasn't doing out of... I'm, I'm sure he was doing out of politeness, but he was also... He was making the effort, and it didn't mm. feel forced. Yeah. He wasn't putting it on. He wasn't like, oh, thank you for having me on the show. He was like, no, thank you yeah. for having me on the show. Like, and it, it actually meant something. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And you don't, you don't get that a lot. I think there's a lot of fakeness that can go on, you know, of, oh, thanks for supporting us. Like, whatever. That's great. Of course yeah. we will. You're good. You're famous, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. you're coming on. Um, but, yeah, he, he was real. He was probably the realest what, person I've ever met. What's the difference? What was he doing? Uh, he was literally being himself. Uh-huh. Literally just being himself. And so is it the that. words, though? Is it like he's... Uh, he's a pretty warm guy. Like, yeah. I think he was, he was pretty warm and welcoming, and he didn't feel like... Yeah, you know, he had a bit of an entourage with him, but that entourage was... They're all creating they're, content. They're, they're all creating... <laughs> literally, I was yeah. watching a guy write down the notes for all of his own videos that they were going to make out yeah. of this interview uh-huh. um, on the show. And I think... It also comes down to the people around you as well. If you've got people that are, yes, they're here to protect you and all that sort of stuff and stop, you know, whatever, but he had no rules. He was, he was met everyone, had a selfie with everyone, all that yeah. sort of stuff where, you know, you sometimes um, you, you've got to tiptoe around a bit because everyone's a bit on edge and the hair and makeup's done mm. and, you know, don't want to muck up that shot and have we got the right lighting and stuff. But, um, yeah, he was someone who conducted himself, I thought, really in it all. Everyone was important from reception to, to, to right up to the, to the intern. Did you know him before? <laughs> no, I never met him before. I okay. had followed his staff yeah. and I was pretty excited to see him um, but yeah he's, he's a guy who's just you know he's clearly done what he's done and, and done it really well and mm. he's not stopping so mm. I mean it's good when you hear about people like this in these positions that are doing doing that yeah yeah, yeah 100% I think it also elevates us and what we want to do like when you have an experience like that you start to think oh look at the impact he had what could I be doing for people at a very micro level to do that same yeah, experience? I think I got so much more out of him off air mm. than what he delivered on air, mm. and that was just that conduction of, of stuff. And that's and that's something we've always tried to do as a team or in any of the shows that I've worked on as well is give people that experience. Don't mm. make it fake, mm. but give them a, like well, make them welcome. Mm. Um, I know you guys um, are mates with like Sam Cav, and he taught mm. me a lot about that sort of stuff as well. And I just think that. Um, it's one of the most important things to do because by the time they walk into that studio, you want that energy. You want that. You want the real person in the studio. You don't want the person who's just been, you know, annoyed or they're not happy about something mm. or they've just had a shit experience in the previous interview. Make sure their experience coming into the studio is is good. Is really important. Uh, would you consider yourself a radio geek? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, way. so what are some of the radio shows uh, around the world that you? keep an eye on or that you enjoy yeah I'm a, I'm a I am obviously like I love Stern I think he's uh-huh. great you know I think um, he's always a guy that um, I think a lot of radio nerds are into yeah. you enjoy him as well yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I think I jo- I'd classify Josh as the radio nerd out of the two of us yeah, yeah. but I just happen to be on the radio yeah. for a couple <laughs> of years totally probably didn't deserve it you should yeah. have been there well I think uh, like Mr 97 like like one of the things that I feel that I learnt from uh, listening to Howard Stern. So I only found out about uh, Howard Stern October last year. Yeah. 
and I went really deep. Like I had a Sirius XM radio in our rental car in the US and, and got it onto the channel. I was like, what is this? Is this a podcast? Like, mm. what is this? And yeah. before you know it, I've bought all the books and gone through all the his, history and things like that. Was that after we went to the States? That was Yeah, that was when we were there. I was like, ah, oh, it was when we went with um, and saw Sirius XM at, uh, with Ben Harlem. He yeah. gave us a, a tour oh, around yeah, the place. Yeah, Ben Harlem Sirius XM tours. Yeah. It's actually a, a proprietary <laughs> limit. <laughs> it's the tax write-off, ladies and gentlemen. And, and so he, uh, yeah, he showed us around, and I remember, like, I had just uh, watched maybe a, a couple of celebrity interviews with Howard Stern, yeah. and then there was something that just drew me in with when Ben was giving us the tour, and it's like, now over that way is Howard Stern and we can't mm. see anything that Howard Stern's doing and so before you know it I got like a subscription to Sirius XM and used a VPN and would li- listen every single uh, morning yeah. and would have the 24 hour station on and the thing that I took from it was what I love about Howard Stern is as much about the characters and the producers as it is him yeah yeah uh, and then I started to relate it back to what I love about Kyle and Jack as well and having that ensemble cast and being able to uh, I feel like if you are talent it takes a certain amount of pressure off when you have an ensemble team that can all be celebrated yeah, and yeah. so on a given day you know Kyle or Jackie O if they're tired they can have the support of you guys to be creating mm. that content. Hundred percent. Well, you're also we're we're their only live audience. They yeah. can't see the people laughing yeah. along or joining them along in the cars. So we're lucky to have such a large team and, and some really funny characters at the moment. We've got Mayo, the guest booker, who's um, this little petite thing who just the guys adore. She's got this really quiet voice, and Meek Mitch, who, who you can barely hear, and then you've got loud, snappy Tom. How did Mayo get her name? By the Mayo, way, Mayo. Her name's Jamie. Then we called her Jamayo, and then this landed in Mayo. <laughs> Ninety-seven nearly got called yeah. Mayo. Oh, really? Yeah. What was that for? Why did, uh, how did you get there? We we asked people to send in uh, nicknames, and for whatever reason, someone did what? Brother. His, uh, his brother uh, said his brother. Uh, Mayo, but uh, we're glad with ninety-seven. That yeah. works well. But you're uh, right. The ensemble cast is is so. I mean, I, I think it's important anyway. Yeah. Kyle and Jack might disagree, but no. Um, I love you know in, in everything you've got like um, Coffee John. He's the yeah. in-house barista, but mm-hmm. he's literally running up and down the stairs all the time. Brooklyn Ross in the newsroom as well, and I think. It, Kyle and Jack can feel if we well we try not to pipe in all the time by any means but if you feel like yeah, I've got something to say and that's what Kyle has always said to me if you've got something mm-hmm. to say I'll turn the microphone on say yeah. it don't hit, you know and be honest you know mm. what I mean and I've I reckon in the early years there was a couple of times where I tried to be a bit funny and a bit wacky yeah and he called me out straight away he's like don't 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 try and perform here be honest yeah. I'm like okay and then I did and then I got myself in trouble later but no it was all right and so what are, so the stern is obviously the it's it's an obvious one yeah, uh, yeah. What, what are some of the the other ones I, I love there's a lot of street like a lot of regional stations stream now so I, oh, have, yeah. a, I have a little listen and I'm I'm a big fan and I have to plug her I have, I'm a big fan of my sister's show as well well, We're so. having her on very soon. Are you? Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. She does breakfast for the Ace Radio Network, um, uh, based out of Warrnambool, mm-hmm. um, and she's 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 very similar to me um, in a sense of let's go, let's make it big, let's mm. make it, yeah. let's make it. Huge. Were you and Kate both going up at the same time, like in regards no, to radio? She's, no. So she's the she would be. I'm 34. She's 36. Uh-huh. She's just joined radio two years ago. Yeah. Um, and um, had found the bug about four or five years ago and did, did a couple of courses and um, you know had a bit of a dabble in that a bit of production a bit of copywriting blah 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 and I always knew that she needed to be on air um, and then it, the, the the spot finally popped up and now she's doing it and I think she's just um, yeah she's absolutely smashing it actually yeah yeah and yeah. so um, uh, the the international side of things when you are on a red carpet uh, or you, you're doing a press junket or wh- whatever it is are there characters I'm thinking of like Elvis Duran's show in New York they've got the um, the crazy character I'm trying to think of his name the bald uh, bald dude but do you get to do you be, befriend the international radio people or do uh, you sort of... a little bit but I also see them as competition that I need to fight you on a red carpet not fight oh, yeah. physically <laughs> well, there's but only also so they're, the, they're, the lo- they're the locals yeah. so the, they're going to know the local publicists so uh-huh. you well, as I said before, like the international ones, you've got to fight for your life mm. to get the interview. Like you have to, yeah, they promise that they'll give you, a, you know, a great few minutes and you can have five questions and you just, you've got to read 
that other end of the carpet because that celeb's already running late. CVS has mm. already taken up yeah. way too much time. They're like the you know the Richard Wilkins and Angela Bishops. They get the good stuff, <laughs> right? And then by the time um, you know they, they walk it down on those American carpets, they're just you've got to read it. you've got mm. one chance this is it and, are you um, are you seeing on red carpets uh internet stars yeah. getting spots you know next to where the radio people all were is yeah, it yeah there's a bit of that going on i think at the logies this year um i think they put a couple of married at first sight stars uh-huh. on doing sort of an online social media stuff so they're they're there doing it um i haven't really looked hard enough to have an opinion on you know is, is it working but is they're it doing working? it for networks by the sound of like yeah. their contractors mm. or whatever Versus, I wonder if yeah, there are the YouTubers, like YouTubers just wanting... directly. Yeah, I've seen a few YouTubers and stuff there as well. So, um, I mean, look, and I suppose it's every publicity team that I've sort of worked with. Well, they they do have their own agenda. They get that you know, if you're working, if if Kiss is coming down, great, you're going to hit a huge audi- audience straight away. Mm. And and they, they don't just happen. You you might be they might be dealing with a big US company or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to work hard just to ensure that your spot's there because it might from my opinion the further down the more the less you're going to get at the end of the day has junkets changed a lot in regards to the amount of cash that uh, companies are spending spending on them? yeah i reckon they've dropped back a little bit more yeah. to be honest and i don't think and i can't speak for everyone but they're not fun experiences mm-hmm. i think there's a lot of pressure on everyone for those junkets to nail mm. um uh you know time's tight it's to a schedule. It's not your. It's not your surroundings. Because we, I know Kyle and Jack, for example. Literally, when you've got that guest in the studio, it's a win for everyone. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's um and and we, you know, Kyle and Jack. I don't think I've been to a junket for a while. We'd prefer a phone over that, to be honest. We'll do a phone, you know, a phone call, because the junket it's tight it's you've got mm. the publicist holding the you know the, the clock in your face and it's then they start wrapping up early so they can make up time mm. and those things sort of go on but look i think you know maybe for the right ones um you can head along for but they are they're tough uh-huh. that's probably the word yeah to get a bit on a red carpet you've got a few minutes not even yeah. sometimes not what how do you go in defining success before you do it so that you can walk away with that thing that whatever you yeah, think success is. I, yeah, I don't care who you're wearing or anything like that. What I try and do, oh, mate, if you're asking, <laughs> no, mate, no, I do. Oh, thank you for the jumper, which <laughs> is going on Gumtree after this, by the way. Uh, it would be a one-off special. Uh, can you guys sign it? As well? Yeah. Well, yeah technically, this is a, a single run. There will be no more run. Yeah, we're not so specific. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So today's I'll keep it. Yeah, okay. Good. You're worth money. Like that. Will um, you wear it to work or no? Is that going to cause too much shit? For you? I don't know. We'll give it a whirl. Yeah. I'll send you a photo and see how it goes down. Kyle, what's this bullshit? <laughs> what's this all about? Um, what's a win? Do you know what? A win can come in so many ways. Um, I, For me, I plan the carpet mm-hmm. and then what's after the carpet and what after parties we can go to and what things we can get throughout the night um, just in case you don't get that. So I'll also come up with, say, three plans. Mm-hmm. Um, is great, we get the most amazing interview in the world with that celeb and they were just fantastic. Two, it's a bit yally and hoo-ha and it was a bit tight and rough. Or three, we completely missed it and absolutely stuffed up and I've wasted too much money of the company and wasted everything. They're the kind of three scenarios mm-hmm. I work off, but it's, as long as you're aiming for the first one and then the second one can be fun as well. And that's why I love like the logies and things like that because mm. you've got so many options I mean so much of what you do is failing funny it's <laughs> yeah. uh, but is there uh, moments where you've had an experience you thought it was shit you thought there's nothing in it yep. and it's turned into some of the best content I didn't realise this it was two years ago it was the Thor movie now I, I still can't actually say his name Taiki Ta- um, um, New Zealand director I don't know Taiki Takawaki. Okay, this is where I, this is where I went wrong on the carpet. <laughs> um, it was a case of it was just after the radio wars. I was hung over as hell, and Sonia, the EP now, was like, "You've got to cover this carpet. Obviously, there's a Hemsworth there. You need to do that. All that sort of stuff." Anyway, I start. This is this is where I started to feel the vibe. Okay, it's he's running late. You know, I don't know if we're even going to get a, a chat here. And I was like, someone. I was sort of chatting with a few people next. They're like, oh, the director's pretty big. I was like, okay, I'll get a grab off the director. And we can ask him about the Hemsworth so that we can tie it in. And then we're talking about a Hemsworth or whatever it was. Turns out, kind of pretty famous guy, Taiki, ta- uh, something rather. Anyway, <laughs> super famous. Anyway, it just went horribly wrong. Where I just was like, oh, hey, Taiki, you're from New Zealand, hey, or something. And I must have made an accent or something. I'm like, oh, sorry. That's that sounded racist. He was like, no, 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 that wasn't racist. I was like, oh, sorry, I just got caught up in the moment. And I think I was still hungover as hell. And I was just kept saying things. It got more and more awkward. 
and I just went, okay, just throw that audio out straight away. What I didn't realise, Sydney Confidential was there and overheard the entire thing, <laughs> and then it was half a page in the paper the next day of the most disgraceful, disrespectful interview with this well respect. I, and I think I said, oh, this is your first feature film. He's like, no, it's my ninth. <laughs> it, was, it was all those things that went wrong, right? And I just remember Sonia ring, ringing me. She got into work about 4.30 and she was like, where's the audio from last night? I was like, oh, there really isn't anything to play yeah. to. Oh, no, there is. Where is it? Where is it now? <laughs> and we got it out. And it ended up just being one of those great breaks on air where like, it's all heads down going, oh, my God, Father, this is happening. Um, and do you know what? I didn't identify that at the time. I was more just like, oh, there's nothing in that. Yeah. Like, to be honest, it was all just silly, you know, a bit embarrassing. But but I actually didn't identify it, whereas it's funny when other people do. What Sometimes I'm going, is this even worth playing or not? And, and you've got to ask other people sometimes. So, hey, listen to me. What do you think, you know? And but, so because you didn't feel like it was anything, and then I'm sure at the moment when you're hearing about it, you're like, oh, no. But then you're also getting validation that it's like, we're all loving this, yeah, by yeah, the way, yeah. but it's on you. Do you, ha, ha, do you enjoy that? Yeah, that's funny. Well, I know, I know, I've just justified the cap charge. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, like the title of this episode, I've justified the cap charge. <laughs> this is, if you've never worked in radio, do, it's I, a big thing. Are they I, cap charges? Oh. Uh, yeah. What's, what's the most ridiculous cap charge you've ever done? No, I heard the Matty John story, with the Matty yeah. John story where he went, um, uh, I, I apparently got it and then parked at home, had a nanny nap, left the cab out there and then went back home, uh, back into the city or something. It was like, I don't know. I don't know if it's true or not, but I, I want to find out one day. But yeah, it was like a thousand bucks or something like that, <laughs> apparently. But um, uh, we all know everyone's abused the cab charge systems in radio, right? <laughs> a mate of mine got uh, sacked or the show finished and so he still had a bunch of cab charges and he didn't have a job anymore. He, got a, he accidentally flew to Avalon and then <laughs> use the cab charge from Avalon Airport back into Melbourne, which is only about 150 bucks or something. Still is fair. I mean, it's a, it's a saving for you at the end of the day. For a company you don't work for no yeah, longer. Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, I heard the, well, another radio network, uh, you know, that, uh, Southern Cross or Stereo, yeah. anyway, I heard that they've, uh, they've changed their cab charge policy now, so everyone has cards, and uh, they're locked off at 5pm uh, Friday night, apparently, so until mm. Monday, 5am. It so. make, makes sense. Mm. No, it makes sense, uh, I suppose. Not getting my place to get involved. Getting names <laughs> wrong. Uh, I'm horrendous at uh, any celebrity name. Yeah. Uh, was that something that you had to learn or do you just oh, no. love all no, this no, stuff? No, 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 I couldn't, no, I literally, I'm the worst researcher. Okay. I don't, I don't, I feel, and I know it sounds like a cop out, like, look, I'll have a bit of a squeeze on the way. And all so you know stuff. celebrity, like, so in I that way. I know them to see them and stuff like that, but if it's, I'm not, I'm, I'm, this is not going to help me in my work, but I don't, I feel like you can over prep sometimes. Mm. I mean, and I know it sounds cliche, but sometimes you've got to feel the vibe. Yeah. You've just got to feel the it's vibe. It's a It re- really do, to be honest, because I just feel, I mean, you've got to know who they are and what they're uh-huh. here for, for yeah. sure. No yeah. worries about that. Um, but I feel like that's what everyone else on the carpet is doing, yeah. is just going, oh, you recently said this in an interview, or you're, you know, we mm. saw this on your Instagram. I don't know, you, you could, I try to feel what's happening in the room at the time and give my honest opinion mm. about it. Like, you know, if you're at the Logies, like, what it, what, do you even know what a Logie is? <laughs> Ask them that question, you know what I mean? Like, bring I, it back to Australia. I love it. It's it's your point of difference because <laughs> we had Dickie on the show, who Dickie is the the man of the red carpet that's been there forever and actually knows everybody. Looks at me in disgust when he sees <laughs> me. He really does. He really does. Would this be brand damaging for him having you just Oh, he's up. putting in way too much effort. I mean, I'm not even an entertainment reporter. I just go there and do a few there here and there. But he's like, oh, there, Mr. Serious. Is he a good chat? I haven't heard it yet. Yeah, that was great. He's great. Uh, uh, who, uh, who have you ended up swapping numbers with, like a celebrity who you've sort of become friends with? Oh, none of them are friends with me, but I've all got always got the number. Um, <laughs> I I do a little trick, and I've stopped doing it because Kyle and Jack spoke about it on the air at the end of the day. Is what I do is um, I go, oh, let's get a selfie, let's get yeah. a selfie, and um, then we go, selfie, go, oh, I'll just text it to you now, yeah. and then you go, oh, you just text it to yourself. Uh-huh. And then they just text it, put their own numbers into your phone, and then text the phone, and then you save the phone number there. So then you've yeah, always got great. the number. It's a little sneaky little trick. Oh, that's but great. Kelly Osborne outsmarted me though. Oh really? Just when Airdrop first started, she was like, "Yeah, airdrop it to me." I was like, "Oh, what's that? Just text it to yourself." <laughs> no, no, airdrop. <laughs> and so you say you do have one of these numbers through yeah. the, through that uh, form of manipulation. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Probably shouldn't have. Well, we spoke around the show. Like How, can you just call them? Like, what, what have you done? What have, where have you pushed the line in terms of having a number in your phone? Hey, can we call one? now. Um, <laughs> I feel like this has just turned into a celebrity name dropping for me, to be honest. Oh, um, you should have heard the Dickie chat. Uh, okay. I feel better. I feel better already, yeah. to be honest. 
worse. Um, the, I, I've had a I've had a rough night on the phone. Um, Jackie and I um, a couple of years ago. I had some plumbing issues at my house, and I said, "Can I stay at your house?" She said, "Yes." We got on the terps, and we rang everyone in my phone <laughs> and her phone. Everyone from crazy John Home Loans to Bruce Jenner to Dr. Chris Brown. He was over in the jungle. The time. We rang everyone blind recorded every single one of the callers and the next morning we played all of men on there and we were disgraceful it was awful <laughs> we literally just handed our phones over to one of the audio producers and said whatever you think's there it ended up being 30 minutes of audio really? it so, was actually disgusting but disgustingly good oh amazing amazing <laughs> amazing, amazing. I, I just remember we were both just going into work going this is I think we've got a lot of apologies mm-hmm. we rang Gay Waterhouse and <laughs> yeah. Jackie was clocking down the um, phone like a like a horse you know <laughs> for no reason at all she's like hello hello like just like we yes. so it's a dangerous place I've I've tried to behave myself when mm. it comes to not abusing it because to be honest I need it they're only giving it to me because I work on you know the show so try not to abuse it but you know it, you can use it when you want to use it yeah. it feels like uh, radio has the reputation of having people with a lot of mental health uh, challenges oh uh, I'm a mess yeah, yeah. and, and um, I mean what's, a, what's that experience been like for you over the years and how have you dealt with it in having such a, a public facing job yeah uh, definitely and I think that goes back to my point before um, when you're off your game um, and I really think it's important to let the people around you know um, and that's not, not just to protect yourself but you know in case you muck up or you make a mistake and um um, I just think it is so important to to, to really speak up about it because it's, um, um, you know, uh, I, I've literally been going through of fuck it. I've been going through it the last two weeks, to be honest. I've just broke up with my partner after um, a long relationship in the last couple of weeks and it's been absolute hell. So, that's, uh, so I didn't realise how important it was to just talk to people and how important that is because I a week ago worst headspace in my life made sure I made sure I told Colin Colin Jack were amazing about it to be honest and um, so I haven't been there literally the last couple of weeks I'm going I can all honestly say going through it now yeah. um, and speaking about it is 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 important do you know what I mean and I think um I wasn't going to say it on air or anything like that because mm. that just felt very fresh and then I it just sort of popped out um, just the other day and I went, wow, oh, wow, okay, that's happened. Mm. So that's the next stage and that's the next stage. And that comes back to, I suppose, us being a very raw and honest show. So, um, yeah, anyway, didn't mean to get so yeah. deep. Well, no, well, I think, like, uh, Tommy and I always joke about all for content, like always be doing stuff for, for, for content. Has there been moments like that where it's like, uh, no, I don't want this. I don't want this to be content mm. or being able to distinguish between uh, so many radio shows there's the banter and the play fighting and how do you create rules so that when you're actually upset you can yeah. communicate that yeah and I think that happened the other week to be honest and mm. that and I did say I said look I'm just not ready I'm not ready to mm. do it at the moment you guys all got like I just I wanted you to know about it and they absolutely uh-huh. respect it but I was the one that opened my trap by mistake actually yeah. like mm. it's, something popped up and went oh well actually I'm single now so yeah. but, and it just, it just happened but um I think I, uh, yeah, I just, I, I think, th- yes, there is rules in place, but I don't know if I have many myself. Uh-huh. Mm. There's not much that's not open, so ask away. Yeah. Like, really, you, uh, you, there's there's not many secrets in the closet, to be honest, you know? Um, and I feel like that's most of the team and anyone who works on the show as well, because honesty is this show. Is this uh, fun in Radical Honesty? We've had a whole episode where, episode 14, early days where we went really honest yeah. and, that, right. and people still talk about uh, the things that we spoke about in that episode uh, have there been you know do you experience that where, where you go really hard with just being like with something that might even embarrass you or that you internally feel ashamed about but when you say it out loud you start to feel freer well I feel like when you make a mistake uh-huh. if you talk about it on the air can't get in trouble for it anymore because it becomes, <laughs> con- becomes content. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, I know that's a bit of a cop out, but yeah, um, there is exactly that. Like it's it's you do think about it and you um, oh god, you know. I, I think face the music and I've gone in times where I've I'm trying to think of an example when I have tried to hide the the mistake or whatever it is, mm. but I learnt the lesson 
get in the get on the front foot of it straight away, mm. uh-huh. and it can be so much better. Because there's no point having something on your shoulders if you've stuffed up, if you've made a mistake or whatever it is. There's no point hanging on to it because mm. it's only going to make it's not going to do you any good. Mm. And by the time it shit hits the fan down the track, and you haven't told the people that you should have told, it's ten times worse. Mm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Uh, future aspirations beyond radio what is it oh, I can't do anything else but radio I love yeah. it I mean my backup plan there's two things I wanted to do growing up I'm a chef by trade uh-huh. so I left school at 16 and did my apprenticeship as a chef and I thought where well, did you work I worked in Geelong uh-huh. at a place called the Empire Grill and then um, and what then was I, your position what were you doing cooking? I was just an apprentice chef yeah, just yeah. Um, everything <laughs> yeah, like, can you do like poach eggs really well oh yeah yeah so then I went on to a French re- restaurant I worked at Le, Le Prisienne on the, on the waterfront there um, and then down in Warrnambool at Pippi's by the Bay. Um, but, so I've said, look, if Radio of All falls out, I've got the ticket, I can go back chefing, but I really don't want to go back chefing at, some uh-huh. st- yeah, at any stage soon. It's, it's hard yakka, but it's very similar to radio. Yeah, I mean, similar. Kiss are always at the forefront of uh, change when it comes to content. And I remember when uh, Kyle and Jack made the switch and how much of a big deal that was. Yeah. And, the studios are always, you know, top notch. Do you get a sense that uh, there's going to be a lot of change in in the coming coming years to show formats or how it's distributed? Um, I don't think with Kyle and Jack because I I always think like I think back to that five and a half years ago when we launched that that launch day was just one of the most incredible experiences yeah. to, mm-hmm. um, and I don't think it's just a standard radio station it was the Kyle and Jackie O show relaunching yeah. and it was absolutely awesome um, is it going to change I I still the thing that will change is out of Kyle and Jack the best is yet to come they mm. haven't played the cards they've just done what they've done and done it well but they haven't they've worked so hard so hard but the best is still yet to come you can yeah, just yeah. see it mm. you can just see it seething out of them all the time to be honest and um you know and i just think it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger for them oh, that's so exciting yeah I know. well i think you're such a as i said the ensemble stuff is such a uh massive part of that show and i think that um yeah, every time i tune in and i hear a bit that you do i i see i see the value that oh, you're annoying bringing. for you to listen <laughs> that's <laughs> great you're, you're you're exciting you bring excitement to the show and yeah. um yeah we love it and we we appreciate you coming on the show. Is this is this wrapping? Yeah, this talk? is, is yeah, this is, the, this is the end. Is there anything else? You no, want no, to say? I've got no. no I've we can got go into a half it. an hour of dialing people on your phone if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to make one call? You can make one call if you want. I, 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 you can. Eat, I, yeah. Oh, hey, what's what's the law? What's I the don't deal? Don't can know. you actually air them on radio? Uh, we have, have to say it on the radio. I just don't know who we could call. I mean, we're here. You guys don't edit your podcast. Do no, you? don't. But what's in terms of radio station? What is the the law around? Say you call. Bruce Jenner. Okay. Yeah. Let's. Uh, what's Can you the just well, Can you just Yeah. Well, he's from overseas, so let's have a look. Let's, who, who, throw me some no, I don't, This is real. As I said, this is turned into a name dropping thing. No, yeah, this is great. We love it. We, like we've got no names, so we we want to associate with you. <laughs> okay. Fuck, you get a lot of missed calls. I know. Calls so I had on airplane mode. Uh, um, uh, I don't know. Coming. Who do you think? Should we try Sophie? She was on the show this morning. Sophie Monk. Let's do her. Oh, that'd be great. That would see if she'll answer. She didn't answer any of my calls this morning, so she's got a new mobile number. But I reckon this one's a. Okay, great. It's nice and close. Hey, where are you? On the plane. Oh, That's shit, true. sorry. I'm recording a podcast and they wanted me to name drop and call a celebrity. <laughs> hi, <laughs> hi, Sophie. Oh, hi, hi, Sophie sorry. Monk. Uh, this is the Daily Talk Show. We're actually friends with Oscar Gordon. Uh, we'd love to have you on sometime. Enjoy your flight. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Are you okay. flying business class? Are you friends with Oscar? Are you really friends with Oscar? Yeah, we've had him on the show. Yeah, he was he was on the oh, show. Right. Yeah, you actually. You well done, guys. Oh, thank you. And we've got uh, intern Pete now, so it's. Uh, Can you believe they want to talk to me? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Oh, oh, great. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, you better go. All right. Thanks, so. See you, so. Bye. Bye. Oh, sorry. I know that's a rule. Sorry. I'll call you later. Oh, we've done it earlier. All right. No worries. <laughs> anyway, Love, I'll you. Love you. I've got heaps to tell you, okay? Okay. Come on. Oh, got heaps to tell. Okay. I'll let you catch the fight. I'll call you back. Bye, bye. So yeah, you got to be friends with all of them. Oh my god, uh, she's gonna kill me later. Uh, amazing. Hey, uh, thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah, and congratulations to you too, by the way. How many shows is this? Uh, four hundred and sixty-three or four. Two. Two. four. So, not, so not on a peak episode, but like a, not like a peak Mate, or five hundred. Anything beyond, <laughs> everything beyond a hundred feels like a peak episode. Yeah, it's so uh, good though. Like I love the fact that what you guys are doing is is all, like to pump out a show every day is massive. Yeah, I know that you. you know, locking in huge stars like. 
myself and <laughs> Richard Wilkins. I can't get kicked yeah, I've crossed the line there. But no, I just want to say a huge crash. I know there's a lot of people watching you guys in the industry and it's pretty exciting. So oh, thanks to you. Smashing well, it. We're excited. Where are you going we're... next? Where, what's next? Uh, I think it's um, we're just do it similar to what you said with Carl and Jack. It's just doing more mm. than, of what we're doing. And we've got, like, we're giving ourselves 10 years. Yeah. And so for us, it's about realising that good shows take mm. a bunch of time, good characters take time to build, audiences take, uh, you know, a decent time to come. So, Do you two disagree much? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but we, we're similar interests in a mm. lot of stuff. And, yeah, we do, but I think that's we're, we're different people and that's yeah. why we have great conversation and, and yeah. have good banter just about shit. Yeah. The, I think the um, the podcast, like the the whole show, we we definitely have gotten closer mm. in regards to what we want to do, and I think that that makes it easy too. Like we, there's no questioning that we want to do this for a long time. And it's Keep awesome going. creating something from nothing. Like I, I've said that before in my life, but when you when you start doing it and it starts to slow, you know, you start to feel a momentum in something. Yeah. It's like. Holy shit, especially creative endeavors, right? What's here before this? Nothing. We just weren't doing it. And so all it was all it is is doing it and then doing more of it and all the things in between and yeah. the journey that you're on. And that's what I love about your career and what you do. It's not just the sound bite, it's the story around it. Totally. Yeah. It's it's everything about it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we're just on a journey. Yeah. You're on a journey, we're it, picking up. It's yeah. a lifestyle thing too, right? Like if we didn't enjoy doing it, it'd be yeah. fucked. But and that's what like some people say, Oh, I want to do a podcast, but I hate doing I hate, yeah, yeah, hate yeah, doing yeah. it so well, don't do don't it don't do it but yeah. is, is that the thing too where everyone everyone says I want to I'm just going to start a podcast what's, what's the one piece of advice like uh, j- just do it or have um, a plan uh, a really strong plan yeah I mean the thing is it's like why like the, for us it's like we uh, we want to do a podcast because we want to con- connect with great people we want to create great work we want uh, something that we can put out every single day yeah, yeah. and mm. so the podcast is the overarching thing but that's if if that's the reason um like what is a podcast a podcast is literally Mm. just a audio on a rss feed that people can download for sure like it's actually Mm. not that different to things like radio it's only a slight shift and so then the question becomes yeah what what does it mean to have a podcast is it longer conversations is it because you want to explore a topic that's interesting to you but um, yeah, definitely. I think you're right in the biggest barrier for people is that they don't start. So, apart from technically, I'm uh-huh. sure technology's changed. But has there? What's the change? What major change have you made since you started? Um, Hide this young guy. Yeah, ah, I yes, reckon. Yeah, missing ninety seven. Yeah, we couldn't do what we do now without the team the three mm-hmm. of us because there's like all the you know Josh is very technical so early days you know he's carrying that labour and then that's relieved in some respects from Mr 97 and then he can go full full blown on that and then mm-hmm. the content and still it's just yeah the team expands our uh, capabilities expand our ceiling rises so we feel like we can do more and so yeah so it's just a expanding you know, ceiling constantly. Yeah. Do you watch who looks at your stories and stuff like that? Oh, a little bit. I mean, I think that it's a, um, it happens at the most random times because we're showing up every single day. Mm. Uh, we don't, like, I think some of the advice you'd given us about, like, I oh, should definitely send that to a news outlet or something like that. And we are very under leveraged in that regard. Um, and our strategy is keep going. Mm. And that strategy seems to serve us more than we're not necessarily like I know like there'd be heaps of podcasters who are like oh who are who's got Instagram accounts that are huge that we can then leverage, mm. whereas our first thought is who do we want to talk to who yeah, are we yeah. interested in who filter. and mm. then oh if if they've got an audience great if they don't uh, no worries and so because we've got a long portion of time that we're doing all of this and we do so we do a lot of them so it's, yeah. It, it all works out. It's not like we're doing it once a week. If you do it once a week, maybe you have to be more strategic. Yeah. Uh, Who's your favourite? Who's your favourite guest? Uh, intern Pete. <laughs> <laughs> then second Richard Wilkins. Yeah. What, what do you What do you think? I mean, ah, uh, it's hard to name names when you. Seth Godin was a real accomplishment, I think, for both Josh and I. Josh, 
you know set out to get him on and I said in the challenge and, and it was something that we both look, he's, yeah. he's someone we look to and love Ben Fordham was awesome oh yeah. he's very annoying though isn't he <laughs> he's very yelly Kyle always talks about it's Ben Fordham we're going to go and get him he's always yelling into the microphone he's very annoying he's always bu- do you know what he's always bugging me on a red carpet yeah. just to get the sound right no mate you've got your own radio show no he's a good guy and some of the shows that Josh and I have done you yeah. just feel really great after yeah. them. And some of them you don't feel great, but you feel relieved that you've talked about something and you've articulated the thought mm. around something, you know, and it can, and yeah, it's it's cathartic. And, and I think it, maybe it's not the individual ones that are amazing. It's the, the pro, all of it. It's a so, collective. It's, a com- it, yeah. it's a community thing as well, right? Like what I think is awesome is it's uh, when we, we had Dan Illick on and uh, Brad Blanks, finds out that we've got Dan Illick on and then mm. he sends us an email saying hey here's three stories about Dan that I think you guys would love and it's this community of everyone supporting everyone yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and I think that that's like if the daily talk show can be the dot connector to help that to help celebrate what other formats what other opportunities can people hear you talking about this stuff because I think people are really interested yeah totally and it sounds like you've, you've always had the guests that are um Obviously, obviously, they've seen who you guys are as well. So it's, um, you know, I just, I, I absolute hats off to you. And as I said, there is, it's great watching. You know, people are watching you. As I said, when that's what I was asking you about yeah. it. You know, are you checking who's seeing your stories? Uh-huh. I know you don't get get religious about it or anything, but it's, um, you guys are smashing it. Absolutely, oh, thank you. smashing thanks, it. It's awesome. Mate, it's awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Sorry, Pete. tried to wrap me ten minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been good fun. My ass is numb. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Oh, it's yeah. a good stretch. Good yeah, stretch. Yeah, yeah. Congrats on all the park run as Where well. Where are you staying? Uh, We're the, staying at the uh, Overlow Hotel uh, on so Waterloo. So just, it's just over there. Oh, Can you yeah. see it? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. They they give you a free mini bar. Yeah, right. it's included. A yeah. loot bag with heaps yeah, of good buffet, stuff. Buffet brekkie, continental. Yeah. Great it's hotel. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah thanks, thanks for you. Uh, it's the Daily Talk Show. Hi, the Daily Talk Show.com is the email address. If you want to send us an email, uh, Pete is uh, is it Peter Depler on Instagram? Uh, yes, Pete Depler. Pete, Pete Depler on Instagram. Some arseholes took took the intern Pete one when I changed it just for an hour. Really? Just for an hour. That's a whole other story. That's a whole thing. That's part two. <laughs> uh, if you enjoyed the show, feel free to review us on Apple Podcasts. Otherwise, we'll see you on Monday, guys. See you guys.